Welcome to Thermal Integration Made Easy, a video and download series that covers everything you need to know about integrating Teledyne FLIR thermal camera modules. Today, we're going to highlight some of the standard and unique features of the Boson Plus GUI 4.2. Designed specifically for the Boson Plus, the new GUI helps integrators quickly set up and test Boson Plus, resulting in streamlined development cycles and faster time to market for new and existing users alike. There are many resources available to support integration at FLIR.com slash boson. Another great resource is our FAQ knowledge base and support center found at FLIR.com slash custhelp. Please note that all the links will be included in the video description. You can download the new GUI from the Boson Plus product support page. Please note that the Windows 10 64-bit OS or newer is required. Integrators with Boson Plus models should use GUI 4.2 while the original Boson Plus models require GUI 3.0 and older. For hardware, make sure you have the appropriate USB VPC for video power and comms, and the cable to connect to the Boson to your computer. The camera link, USB, and development boards are all acceptable as long as the USB connection is established and the camera is powered. Make sure to install the supplemental video codec drivers during the installation. The Boson Plus GUI will create a new install, so you don't have to worry about overriding the older version. First, we are going to connect the camera via USB and subsequently in the GUI using the USB video control tab and then the COM port selector. Although both the video and comms are using USB, there is a separate UVC video port to the COM port and both must be connected independently. It is possible to use the GUI only connected to the COM port while using another application to stream UVC video, like a webcam. Pre-AGC 16-bit or post-colorized 8-bit AGC video can be selected. When pre-AGC is selected, the video and photos will be in the 16-bit format. The video shown on the screen is not 16-bit and is compressed using a simple linear transformation to 8-bit video. This allows you to analyze either video stream as some users will opt for the full bit depth and optionally the radiometric stream and some will only want to view the post AGC output using the high performance boson plus AGC. Next, we are going to enable and configure the MIPI video output on the boson plus. To ensure it's configured exactly as expected, this is an important step before testing the MIPI video channel. First, click MIPI. Then select the desired pixel format. We will use pre-AGC mono 14 for this example. Next, enable or disable the two telemetry modes as needed. Now, save the camera settings in the system tab to keep the settings when moving the camera to the development system. Potential pixel formats include pre-AGC 14-bit mono 14, post-colorized UYVY, and post-AGC mono 8. Frame and telemetry formats include embedded telemetry, which is unique to the MIPI interface, or in-frame telemetry, which is standard for Boson already. Video mode configuration has specific order of operation and more complexity than other video options due to the variety of possible combinations. Proper configuration of the video channel is necessary for a successful confirmation of Boson Plus video output, so please be diligent in this process. The GUI will handle the correct order of operations and the background setting changes necessary for a successful transition between camera states. GUI 4.2 also includes all the standard features that can be found on GUI 3.0 and older, including max gain, which increases contrast in low contrast situations, linear percent to increase the histogram spac spacing of objects with different temperatures, Digital Detail Enhancement, also known as DDE, to increase edge sharpness but increase noise. Decreasing ACE, or Adaptive Contrast Enhancement, also known as Gamma, to skew the image to feature more darks and lights, and less in between. And also radiometry characteristics, to optimize the radiometric accuracy when measuring the temperature of an object. Color palettes in thermal imaging can alter the appearance of a scene and emphasize certain areas without affecting the captured temperature data. While color palettes are mostly based on personal preferences, some environments or applications may require a specific palette for optimal results. 
Here are some popular palette options to consider. Iron Bow. A favorite among thermographers, Iron Bow is a versatile color palette that quickly identifies thermal anomalies. It uses warm colors to represent hot objects and cool colors to represent cold ones, highlighting subtle details. Rainbow. Similar to Iron Bow, Rainbow uses warm colors to represent the hottest part of the image and cool colors to represent the coldest parts, only with more colors in the mix. It's ideal for pinpointing objects and environments with minimal heat differences, especially in commercial applications. White Hot. The most used palette is White Hot. Warmer objects appear in white and colder objects appear in black. Grayscale palettes are simple and realistic for scenes with a broad range of temperatures, while White Hot's versatility makes it appealing for applications with changing landscapes such as military and search and rescue missions, Black Hot is also available as the inverted version of White Hot. Isotherms are bright colors, usually red, yellow, or blue, that highlight certain temperature ranges in a grayscale image. These temperature ranges can best be set by the operator. Isotherms are best used to alert you of any hot equipment operating outside of the safe limits or detecting cold areas that might indicate a problem with a piece of equipment. This wraps up our episode on the Boson Plus GUI. For additional support, you can find more information by visiting fleer.com slash boson or fleer.com slash custhelp for technical support. Be sure to tune into our other episodes to learn more about Boson integration. If you want to see more content like this, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.